Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Rob Vidoric. It is so good to have you here. Shout out to all my architect and product owner comrades, because to be honest, this video isn't going to make me any friends in the rest of the ServiceNow ecosystem. To understand the deadliest risk to your ServiceNow platform, you have to visualize its deployment. In a way, you're doing this already anytime you ask the question, how far are we from out of box, or do we have any risks for upgrade? Now you might think the answer looks something like this, user updates plus activated plugins, but it actually looks something more like this the brain of your ServiceNow resource. More often it looks like this. The story of your instance is spread among a team, each person with different parts. But it's even more likely that it looks like this. Your team plus all the resources from all the vendors you've ever had on the instance. Reality check. ServiceNow is a hot skill in a hot bull market. Talent is fluid and mobile. This means the foundation of your ServiceNow knowledge is compromised. And nowhere is that more true than with your vendor's resources. What you know about what you've deployed and why is perpetually degrading and disappearing. If you take nothing else from this video, adjust your current and future vendor management protocols and insist, I want a handoff document. I want a handoff document. I want a handoff document. Give me a goddamn handoff document before I drag your soul to hell. If that seems disproportionate, you won't feel that way once we start pricing out the risks. Let me tell you two vendor experiences I've witnessed at one client in three months. So we had a vendor that deployed ITSM with accelerators. Now we're going to get to the concept of accelerators in another video, but the important part is that none of the accelerators nor any of the configs or customizations for the deployment were documented. Accelerators soon started colliding with out of box features. Leadership got spooked that maybe things had been over customized. So they asked the vendor, this same vendor, how far from out of box are we? And this vendor, this same vendor, sends over a $50,000 proposal to document and assess. Now, if architecture hadn't caught this, the customer would have paid that 50K for something they should have had to begin with. Risk, vendor back engineering their own undocumented work. $50,000. Same customer and a different vendor wrapped up a massive ITBM deployment they described as the most custom solution we've ever deployed. As issues appeared during training, we asked for documentation. Just read the stories, they said. Sure, I'll just read 150 stories so I can find a needle in a big old stack of needles. When pressed, the same vendor challenged us on the scope, and I quote, documentation is time consuming and we don't offer it because so few customers ask for it specifically. So let's break down just how little respect this vendor has as for you. The following risks are all but assured. It's a heavily customized solution on an out-of-box process and you will upgrade in the next year. That means you're going to have collisions with ServiceNow's code. If the precedent of customization is already set, there's no doubt that stakeholders are going to want more of it. You need to know what you have before you can build on top of it. And with no docs provided, you're still on the line for support and your devs for any change to the configuration. There's no less than a 100% chance you're going to need to back engineer the whole deployment. And since things take as long or longer to back engineer than to build, that back engineering will cost you anywhere from 50 to 200% of the total project cost to deploy it. And that's before we start talking about changing the one or two things that have been hyper-customized, which will take longer than deploying out-of-box features. Risk. Back engineering and building on top of hyper-custom solutions. $200,000. The good news is this risk is easily hedged with simple documentation protocols. You don't need an Excel line item plus justification for every single config change, but you would be blessed to have something that looks like this. A document that contains high profile customizations for the deployment, which also contain the why. A description of the component pieces with links to the actual objects and links to the stories justifying this part of the build. I prepared a document like this outlining a months long engagement the customer still praises today. And I did it with less than 5% of the total cost. So don't let a vendor tell you that documentation is too hard to scope. Documentation is the succession plan for your instance. Your vendor won't be there forever. Your team won't be there forever. Maybe you won't be there forever. But for those of us who give a damn about what we do, the solution should be there for as long as possible. It will only do so with memorialized documentation of how and why it got there. This has been Robert Fedorik, your advocate and freelance vendor agnostic service now architect. If you want help setting up documentation standards for your team and vendors or architecture help in general, check the description below for how to contact me.